Well, hello again. Welcome to our reading of the Greek New Testament. We're reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I got up to verse 13 in the previous recording. Verses 13 uh, to 16 seem to form a kind of digression. Uh, it's thought by some that this section is an interpolation, uh, especially because there are some issues with uh, a bit later on when we look at verses uh, 15 following. Uh, I'm not, I don't think so. Uh, it seems to me that, it, that this section repeats many of the ideas in the first section of chapter 1, and so in some sense this is a kind of recap, uh, but also adding some more apocalyptic material at the end of the section. Anyway, so it reads, Kaidea tuto kai humes ekaristumen to theu adialeptos hoti paralabontes logon a coes pa hemon to theu edexasti u logon anthropon ala cathos estin alethos logon theu hoskai enegetai en humin tois pistu ois the usin. And on account of this, also, for this reason, we give thanks to God, and again he's using the we plural form all the way through here, and um, despite what some commentators think, I think it really, he has in mind also Timothy and Silvanus. So on account of this also, we give thanks to God, art dialectos, unceasingly. This is alpha privative, and we get the lapo of failing here. So unfailingly, unceasingly. Hoti because paralebontes from uh, paralembano, uh, it has the sense here to accept. It's, it's to take from and hence accept. Because accepting, uh, now we get a funny expression here, literally the word of hearing in, of God from us you, um, you received. So the, the akoe is a word meaning, it's connected with a kuo, of course, it means literally hearing, used also in the sense of message or preaching or, or report, perhaps. It does have that meaning of report, that which you've heard. Uh, and in cla it can also, in classical Greek, it can also refer to the ear, in fact, but, but not hear. Uh, so it's something like um, having accepted the word of the preaching, of the teaching or the report, well, from God or regarding God. It's a defining genitive. And then the word order is odd. So, parahemon, from us, uh, you received not a word of men, uh, Allah, but um, the, that but just as it is true, but so, but just as it truly is, understand you receive the word of God. So this is coming after this verb. So you receive not a word of men, but understand you received a word of God, um, just as it is truly. So just as it truly is. In other words, just as it, um, that th it, it is in fact, the word, a word of, from God. So again, the word order is odd, and the, the idioms are slightly odd here. So a word of God, just as it truly is. Hos kai, who also, enegetai is one of those um, favourite words of Paul. He uses it elsewhere in other epistles. It often translates to operating. It's got that erg root of working, so it's working in and hence operating. In whom, whom in, either, well, in you, the ones believing. This is a dative plural participle here. So either in or among, doesn't matter. So who also is operating among you, the ones who are believing. Present part, participle in the dative plural here. Hume ska mimetai, and we get this, we've had this word before in this um, work, the idea of, that Paul uses this idea of 
copying or uh, imitating. So you became imitators, uh, Adelphoi, so um, my brothers, uh, turn ecclesion to theo to uson ente judai en Christo Jesu. And I might just stop it there. So you became imitators of the churches of God. Those being, this is the uh, feminine genitive plural participle from the verb to be. It's agreeing back with ecclesia, which is a feminine noun. So those being uh, in Judea, in the Messiah Jesus. There's no separate dative form for this. Um, hoti ta alta epathity kai humas hupoton idion sum feleton, kathos kai autoi hupoton iudion. And this is a long sentence, but I might just stop it there. Uh, because you suffered from Pasco, this is the aorist here, you suffered ta alta the very same things. When you get autos with the article, it means the same, so the very same things. Uh, and you, yeah, because you suffered the very same things, and you, um, understand, suffered uh, at the hands of, we've got hoopo here, at the hands of your idion sum feleton. This is a word meaning fellow countrymen. It's literally those from the same fule, from the same tribe, and hence fellow countrymen. So, at this, um, so you suffered, understand, at the hands of your own countrymen, just as also they did, that is, these other uh, churches in back in um, Palestine, they suffered at the hands of the Jews. Uh, so again, there's this exclusivity um, which of the, the type that of early Christianity which was a source of tension with the community as familial and racial ties get put under quite a degree of strain when people were converted. Now this hoopa here is going to, plus the genitive is affecting all of these genitives coming up here so we've got to understand hoopa as well. Um, so, uh, they who suffered at the hands of the Jews, and in opposition to that, the ones uh, who killed, who also killed Ton Curion, the Lord, Jesus, Kaitus Prophetas, and the prophets, and, again, it's all dependent on this Eudion, and again, this Hupa, the hands of the Jews, who, uh, Ek Dioxantone, this is a uh, from di this is ectioko to persecute. Dioko is the basic verb. Ectioko just makes it stronger. Who so are really persecuted? Hamas us. And again, all dependent on this genitive. Those who were not pleasing to God from Aresco. Again, genitive plural participle. And another genitive here. Those being hostile to all men, um, and again a genitive plural here, those who were um, hindering us uh, from speaking tois ethnesin to the Gentiles, hina sothosin, that they might be saved. Now the grammar here is slightly odd. You would normally, in better Greek, after a verb of hindering like this with an infinitive, you would normally have a may. So hindering them uh, from speaking. Uh, Paul doesn't put the may in here, but that's what you were having um, slightly better Greek. So those who are not pleasing to God and hostile to all men, and who are, who uh, were, are hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they might be saved. As to anaplerosai autantas hamatias pantoti, ep the sin de ep autus he orgeas telos. With the result that, so we get ace to plus infinitive, with the result that um, their sins 
uh, anapleurosi literally are filling up. But actually it's probably, uh, this is probably the object of this infinitive. And so it's so as to fill up or to complete the measure of their sins, pantoti, uh, something like at all times. And then he finally stops the sentence here. Eta senda autos heoge est helos. This is from Phthano. It's a funny, difficult word to translate. It's been the meaning of it was to anticipate or proceed. Uh, forestall is another older translation of this. In the New Testament, it's got slightly weaker meanings of attain or reach or precede. Uh, often translated it, it has come. So some translations say the 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 um, the anger has come against them. Es telos is idiomatic here. Finally, literally in the end. Uh, I suggest perhaps um, to use some modern idiom to say has caught up with them. So to translate all of this here as um, the the anger perhaps of God has finally caught up with them. Now it's not exactly clear what this reference is to. It's probably very unlikely to be the destruction of Jerusalem because that didn't happen until 70 AD and this is probably written about 4950. Uh, some hold it as a later interpolation, those who argue that 13 to 16 is a later interpolation, but it, it could refer to, to that there were numerous pogroms against the Jews at this time from the, from the Romans, so it may refer to the exclusion of the Jews from Rome by Claudius, which Paul mentions, of course, in Romans, uh, which is why Aquila and Priscilla had to leave Rome. And that happened about 49, which is probably close to the date of this letter. It could refer to the massacre of Jewish nationalists at about the same time, uh, others take this whole section to be um, apocalyptic and hence referring to some future time, but I suspect it's, it's actually referring to some particular event, probably the expulsion of the Jews. Uh, interestingly also in this passage, just in passing, you can read lots more in the commentaries, that Paul explicitly blames the Jews for the death of Jesus, not, not the Romans. And it's it's sort of ironic that the it was the exclusivism of the Jews that made them very unpopular in Hellenistic and Roman times and something that uh, well also happens to early Christianity where there is a sense of exclusivity about, uh, about the faith. Well just to finish off the last section here this next section in fact continues on to uh, verse 13 of chapter 3 but I'll just finish to the end of chapter 2. It describes here now the relationship, the very close and warm relationship between Paul and the Thessalonians. Humeste adelphoi ap orphanistentes ap humon pros chiron horas prosopo ucardia perisonteros espudasomen top prosopon humon idain in pole epithumia. But we, notice again it's we, plural, brethren. This is a, a, an interesting verb. It's, um, it's ap orphanisdo. We get our word orphan from this and it li literally means to, to make an orphan. It's just ap plus orphanisdo. It's in the passive here. This is a uh, aorist passive participle. So meaning to be bereft is probably the best way of translating it. It's only here in the New Testament. Uh, it does occur once in Aeschylus, so it is a, you know, a word from at least classical poetry. I've not seen it in prose. So, um, being bereft uh, uh, from us, uh, pros chiron horas. Hora normally means our, and in fact we get our word our, it's cognate, we well, not get it from this, but it's cognate with our word our. It can just mean a period, it does here, a season of time, because it's literally for a season of an hour, but he doesn't really mean that, he means for, for a period of time, for the time being. 
uh, prosopo u cardia. So literally in face and not in heart. So again, this is, you might translate this uh, uh, in person, we're separated from each other in person or perhaps physically, but not in our heart. I'm going to paraphrase it slightly to get it into English. Uh, Perisoteros espudas. I mean, this is from, um, from spudasdo, uh, to be keen to do something. Uh, so, and it's plural again. So we were keen, and we get a comparative adverb here from perisos. You've got the oteros, and then it's become an adverb. So um, it's, uh, we would say, very excessively. So we were, we were excessively keen, idain, to see, to cross upon humon, your face, en polothumia, again this instrumental use of en, so with much desire, from epithumia. Dear Hoti, um, for which reason, this is dear plus Hoti, for which reason, a thalesa men, this is the aorist from thelo, and it's got this funny augment here because the verb was originally ethelo, in the present the epsilon disappeared, but then it reappears in the imperfect and the aorist in Biblical Greek. So that's why we've got an eta at the beginning, as there was an original epsilon which is augmented, so for which reason we um, we wished uh, to come to you. Now we get ego men, and but you look in vain to find the de. It's as though Paul was about to say uh, de and um, Timothy and Sylvanus, but he, as often happens in Paul, he sort of doesn't finish the sentence properly and loses the track of what he's saying. Uh, so, ego men paulos kai hapax kai dis kai en ekopsen humas hos satanas. Because he does use the plural here, so he's, it's as though he was going to say, I, right, Paul, and Timothy and Sylvanus, but he doesn't get around to doing it. So, I, Paul, kai hapax kai dis, this is an idiom here, uh, could mean two possible things. It... Um, it might mean either not once but twice. It's literally both once and twice. Or it, this phrase does occur apparently in, in the, does occur in the meaning more than once. I think the meaning's clear, whatever the exact translation is. So I pour uh, often times, perhaps uh, once more than once, several times, once and twice. Uh, uh, so you have to understand, I wanted to come to you, but he doesn't say that, because he gets he puts in this extra bit here, and Satan, uh, enekopsen humas, enkopto is to hinder, uh, to um, put a stumbling block in there, to block or hinder, so Satan blocked us or hindered us, and he doesn't give any reason, any further explanation for that, and he doesn't really finish off what he was saying here. Because he moves on to the next uh, idea here. Tiska hemon elpis e kara e stephanos kalkesios e uki kai humas. And the editor's kindly put in some breaks here to help us. Empros then to kuriu hemon yesu en te autu parousia. It's a question. Uh, so, for uh, what hope. Or what is, I've got to understand, is, what is our hope and joy and crown of boasting? And then we get this little uh, insert here. Um, uh, is it not also you? So it, it's, it's almost, a, it's a rhetorical question here, meaning surely it is uh, nothing else but you. And then the, the sentence continues on, our boasting, empros then before our Lord Jesus, in, te, uh, in his coming. The word order again here is slightly odd. Don't normally put our two there between the article and the noun with this. Um, you'd normally put it outside of this, but he just says in, in his coming. Slightly odd word order. Humeska esti hedoxa hemon kai hekara, for you are, you plural, are our glory 
and our kara and our joy. So again in this section here he's reiterating quite affectionately his close relationship um, with the Thessalonians. And that is the end of chapter 2.